after you are born again, you are set apart to become a peculiar person with a peculiar life by the motivation of your life. By the motivation of your life. In Matthew 6, 32 to 34. Let's start from 25. Matthew 6, 25. It says, For therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink, nor what you shall put on for the body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Go on. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And the Bible says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit or one inch to his height? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, for they grow, they toil not. For how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What he's trying to say is that don't fixate your mind on your food needs, on your clothing needs, on your shelter needs, on your car driving needs, on your material needs. Don't fixate yourself on them. Don't let that be the motivation of your life. It's like you move only when you get an advantage for food, advantage for clothing, advantage for housing, advantage for something that you need physically. You are motivated to do outreach only when you see that there is a brother who seems to like you and he's available during the outreach. You go for the outreach. You are so busily always coming for rehearsal because the lead singer is not married. You want him to spot you. So you are motivated by the marriage, not by the love of Jesus. So you see such people, once they get the man, they stop the choir. True. Even there's a sister, I'm always telling her that. She grabbed the man. She located herself in the department where the brother was, was champion. And went her way with hard work, coming early, going late, staying long, doing things hard work joining a hey, very hard working was dead coming early leaving late yes but the brother was coming and here leaving late so you get a long time to interact during the time of working working for god but that was not the motivation her motivation was to grab the man i am telling i always tell her that that was your motivation she'll be laughing and smiling yes that department, Minim Crasso, or Faho Crada. I left that department and joined non department. Joined the department of I work alone and I work not for God. <laughs> what is your motivation? What is making you come for the all night? And for many Christians, our motivation even for serving God and coming to church is advantage for job, advantage for money, advantage here, bump pioneer, maybe prophetic word, we be far line. So now I'm out so on your mere page out. I mean, your cashier, God is about to elevate you, God is about to lift you up. I tell you something, something good is coming to your brother. But the Bible says, take no thought. Don't fixate your mind on food only. On drinking. On what you wear. Verse 32, brother. For after these things, do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But you rather seek ye first the kingdom of God. Fixate your mind on the kingdom of God. Don't tell me that I'm using it to con you. 
I've lived on this scripture since I became a Christian, 1976. It was not thrown at me. I followed it literally. Because the passage tells me that fixating my mind on material things is not what I should do with my life on this earth. If you go to Colossians chapter 3, he highlights the same thing in another way. Colossians 3 from verse 1. Colossians 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. If I tell you this, it's not that I want you to be poor. Or that I want you to look, I don't want you to look after your children or, or, or wife. Set your affection on things above. That means that let the motivation of your life be heavenly things and things that, that relate to God. Verse 3 says, Verse 3, brother, hey! <laughs> For, <laughs> okay, verse 2. Verse 2. <laughs> Verse 2, set your affection on things about nothing. Verse 3, verse 3 says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So you are dead. A dead man. Somebody who is supposed to be dead to this world. It's like everything in this world, you want some. And your mind, that's your motivation. That's what makes you go to church. That's what makes you pray. When you see somebody pray, looking for a child or looking for a husband or looking for something. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. He was alive, but he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh. I live it by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm not calling you and trying to take away your pastime. I'm teaching you the ways of God. Seek first the kingdom. Let that be your motivation. Why are you in church? Why are you in church? Why are you in church? Why have you joined that group? Why are you so busy? Oh, you are a girl. You say you want to join Ashes. Only male are doing a strange job. You don't want to call Also, you're female Asha. You don't female Asha. Why are you there? Are you sure you are there because of the love of Jesus? Sister, can you hear? As soon as they get their boy pet. Oh, you know, now, when I sit for a long time now, my lower back, Bishop, say what you say. May I say, you're not paying me. I will have. Hey, into into me, it's not for a long time. And when I carry chairs, he's got the Asha. Uh, he's married here. Into your feet and a chair near. Hey, but when you are not married and you are not beloved, dust. Where you are, you cry out. On fear, you are cry out. Oh, see, you are cry out. As well. But once you get the person, oh my, yeah, see, Bishop, yeah. Every month, yeah, I'm not. I mean, to me, yeah, she. For four years, you were there working. They had not beloved those. None of these things came. Your beloved, those who wear your pet, now your ayase is come. Your back, lower back has come. Your side has come. This side has also come. Even your breast grab pain. Yeah. And then Monday you go to work. But you see, our motivation, eh, what drives us, the driving force. You see, somebody was showing me a video. He said, I was leading worship or praises some year 20, 2004 or 2003 now me me praise you see bishop you haven't changed you are so wild on fire because i was not motivated by marriage i was not motivated by money when i was serving and jumping for god i didn't have a car 
I was doing, when I got a car, I was still doing it. I wasn't married when I was doing it. When I got married, I was doing it. I didn't have children when I was so excited about Jesus. And I was excited about Jesus when the children came. After they have grown, my daughter has married and left. I'm still excited about Jesus because my motivation is the kingdom and not something material or something physical that I can get from him. I know you have made, me, made a mistake. I didn't have a car that the type of car I'm driving. I was still excited about Jesus. It has never changed when a car came. But because you know, the whole thing is about pleasing somebody or trying to win some favor. That's why you are so big, 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 big. when the favor comes, then shum, you are gone. Because the motivation of your life is not the seeking first of his kingdom. 